Hi, everyone. All right, sorry, my computer was taking a while for my camera to come up, but I am on here today. I'm gonna to be reading chapter 11 of Friendship According to Humphrey. Now, if you guys can remember from chapter 10, which if you didn't get a chance to see it, it is on Google Classroom from yesterday, and I read chapter 10, and if you weren't able to view it there, you can go to the YouTube link I provided. You might have to go on a different device to view it that you're not logged into the school email address because I know it has been blocking YouTube. Um, but I do have a YouTube channel where I'm posting all of these videos. So you can check that out. But on chapter 10, we learn that Aldo is kind of going back and forth to see if he should take Mrs. Brisbane up on her offer to teach a lesson to the class to kind of test out the waters to see if he likes being a teacher. Um, so he's kind of thinking about that, but he's very nervous. And Humphrey thinks, of course, he should do it um, because he thinks he would be a great teacher. Um, but also we learned that Tabitha, she's still struggling to make friends. She still carries her bear around a lot, but she seemed to start um, maybe making friends with Seth. They started talking. Seth was talking to her and thought that she knew a lot about sports, which they both had that interest in. And it seems like Humphrey is now trying to get them to become closer and so he was kind of doing something sneaky um kind of like he did with the girls by switching their belongings so he's kind of doing something to maybe get them to be closer so he was moving seth's study guide to tabitha's backpack so we'll see what happens in this chapter today so it's called study buddies tabitha's mom looked like a regular mom even though tabitha said she wasn't her real one tabitha called her carol I've been looking forward to this day, or to this all day, said Carol, with a smile that showed she meant it. I liked her enthusiasm. You'll have to show me how to take care of Humphrey. I've never had a hamster before. So remember, ham uh, Humphrey is at home with Tabitha now. It's a snap, I squeaked. I think Humphrey's trying to tell us something, Carol said. Smart lady. Once we were home, Carol set my cage on the table and made some hot chocolate. How was your day, she asked. Tabitha shrugged her shoulders just like any other day, if only she knew. She opened her backpack and pulled out some papers. I've got math homework. Carol examined the paper. Honey, this isn't yours. It belongs to somebody named Steph, Seth Stevenson. Tabitha grabbed the study guide. We must have switched. She rummaged around in her backpack and pulled out another study guide. Hang on, this one's mine. She showed Carol the study guide with her name on it. Is this important, asked Carol. Very, said Tabitha. Very, very, very. I couldn't help squeaking up. Seth will need this. We'd better try to call him, Carol said. It looked as if things were working out according to my plan, but you can never be sure with humans. Seth and his mom arrived the next morning. Thank you for calling, said Mrs. Stevenson. Seth was in a panic when he couldn't find his homework. It took me a while to get your number. I finally called Mrs. Brisbane, Carol explained. I'm sorry we never met before. I didn't even know there was a new girl in the class. Seth's mom said, Seth and his mother, whose name is June, I found out, took off their coats and Carol made hot chocolate again. I'm so happy to meet somebody from Tabitha's class, said Carol. Did Tabitha get invited to Richie's birthday party, June asked. Carol shook her head. I'll call his mom. She invited everyone in class, but I'll bet she didn't know about Tabitha either. I'm sorry no one called to welcome you. We'd love to have you at the parent-teacher meetings. Carol poured out the steaming chocolate. I like that. I'm kind of new to this mother business. Looks like you're off to a good start, said June. The two mothers moved into the living room while Seth and Tabitha sat by my cage. Smiley the bear lay on the table. Hey, Humphrey, Seth greeted me. I spun on my wheel to show him I was happy to see him. If Richie invites you to his party, will you go? He asked Tabitha. I don't know, she said. Maybe. Seth rubbed his nose. Well, if you do, could you leave Smiley at home? Tabitha looked surprised. Why? Seth sighed. Well, I know you're not weird, but the other kids think that you are because of the bear. If you'd leave him at home, they'd know you. They'd know you're, you know, regular like them. Then they'd like you. Tabitha thought it over. Are you going to be there? Sure. Richie says he's planned a cool surprise. Tabitha frowned. I don't like surprises. This will be a good surprise. A great surprise, said Seth. Tabitha didn't answer right away. Okay. If you'll be there, I'll come and I'll leave Smiley at home. Seth looked relieved. Great. They watched me spin on my wheel and talked about the math test. After a while, Tabitha said, the basketball game's on. Want to watch? The two of them raced out of the room 
and I didn't see them again for the rest of the afternoon. June went home, but Seth stayed, and she picked him up later. I didn't care because I wasn't worried anymore. Tabitha left, left Smiley on the table next to my cage. He seemed to be smiling even more than usual. It looked as if a nice shiny silver friendship had begun. I felt warm inside all weekend, especially when Seth called Tabitha on Sunday night to ask her some questions about math. But it was cold, cold, cold on Monday. Shivering, quivering cold. It was even chillier if you were standing near Heidi and Gail. Even when she wasn't around, Heidi, Gail hardly ever giggled, giggled any, anymore. Then came Tuesday, the day of the big math test. It was probably the quietest day of the year as my classmates were very nervous about this test. Kirk groaned a few times during the test. Seth got up three times to sharpen his pencil. Everyone seemed glad when it was over, especially me. Aldo was unusually quiet that night too. Instead of talking to me while he ate, he spent a lot of time writing in a big notebook. Sometimes he'd stop to stare at me, then go back to writing. It started to snow on Thursday when the students got to class. They were all bundled up in heavy hats and scarves, and they all had red noses. A few of those noses were runny, I'm sorry to say. After class began, Mrs. Brisbane rubbed her hands together as if they were still cold. I have finished grading your math test, she announced. Every single grade went up. Most of them, most of them a lot. I know how hard you all worked, and I'm so proud of you. Now we can get back to preparing for the poetry festival. When she handed the test back, there were sighs of relief this time and not one groan. Now I have a big surprise for you. Today we're going to have a guest teacher. Is that like a substitute? asked Heidi. Of course, Mrs. Brisbane reminded her to raise her hand. No, he's coming to teach one class and many of you already know him. It's Aldo Amato. You mean my Uncle Aldo? asked Richie. Yes, your Uncle Mr. Amato, said Mrs. Brisbane. And there he was at the door. Aldo had become Mr. Amato. He wore a white shirt, a red vest, dark pants, and a plaid tie. He looked almost as spiffy as Principal Morales, and his cleaning cart was nowhere in sight. Come on in, Mrs. Brisbane said. Thank you, Mrs. Misbane, Mrs. Bisbrain, Mrs. Brisbane, Aldo stammered. It might have been cold outside, but Aldo was sweating. I was pretty nervous myself. He turned to the students and said, hi folks. I spend a lot of time in this classroom when you're not here. So it's nice to see real people sitting in these chairs for once. A good looking group, I must say. A few students chuckled and Aldo relaxed a little. I was talking to my pal Humphrey the other night and started thinking about what the world looks like from his point of view. I mean, here he is, a small animal in a room full of much larger animals, namely you. When everybody laughed, Aldo looked a lot more relaxed. Anyway, Humphrey gave me a funny idea for something we can all try together today. Who, me? All oh, shucks. Aldo held up a pencil. Can every, can anybody tell me what this is? A pencil, answered Heidi. Oops, hands please, said Aldo. Heidi's hand shot up. Yes, ma'am, said Aldo. I was impressed. Mrs. Brisbane never called anyone ma'am. It's a pencil, said Heidi. Really? What do you think? Aldo pointed at pay attention art, who was stand, or who was staring up at the ceiling. Who, me? What? Aldo walked toward art holding the pencil up. I asked you, sir, what does this look like? Mrs. Brisbane never called anyone sir either. A pencil, answered Art. Aldo stared at the pencil for a second. I think you're right. But what does it look like to Humphrey, Aldo asked. To tell you the truth, I thought it looked like a pencil, but that clearly wasn't the answer Aldo wanted. He approached my cage and held the pencil up right in front of me, very close. What do you think Humphrey sees? The class was quiet for a few seconds before hands began going up. Even Heidi remembered to raise her hand. Aldo picked Kirk this time. He probably sees a big, big strip of yellow, he said. I think you're right. What do you think, Aldo pointed to Saya? Maybe something grainy, like a yellow tree trunk, she answered. Yeah, if you look closely, you can see the texture. Aldo turned to me. Right, Humph? Whatever you say, Aldo, I squeaked. That sent Gail giggling until she caught Heidi's eye. Heidi made a face at her and Gail turned serious. So today we're going to look at the world from Humphrey's eye point of view. Ready to start? My classmates all smiled and nodded. Aldo opened a briefcase. I'd never seen that before and took out an envelope full of tiny squares that were open in the middle like picture frames. These little squares will help us look at things more closely. 
Aldo must have spent a lot of time cutting out those one inch squares. He handed one to each student. Next, he took out all kinds of things from his briefcase and spread them on Mrs. Brisbane's desk. Colored leaves, pieces of lettuce, tomato and broccoli, lemon peel, onion skin, heavy paper, a purple feather, pieces of bread, many interesting and yummy things. I want you to draw what you see with your colored pencils or crayons and answer a few questions, said Aldo. Okay, you can start exploring now. Soon my friends were wandering around the room, examining things through their square inch. They were so busy, busy, busy. No one seemed to notice that Mr. Morales had slipped into the room. He and Mrs. Brisbane both watched Aldo. They were nodding and smiling. The kids were smiling too. Oh, you should see this, AJ yelled as he viewed his glove through the square. I was the only one who noticed that Saya went over to Tabitha and asked if she could borrow Smiley and study his fur. He's not here, Tabitha answered. He's at home. You could have knocked me over with a purple feather. While my friends looked at the world from a different point of view, I looked at Og. How did he see the world? His goofy eyes pointed in two separate directions. Perhaps I looked like two hamsters or a much bigger hamster than I am. Maybe that's why he leaped at me the first night. It would take more than looking through a little square for me to figure out Og. After a while, Aldo asked the kids to return to their seats. What did you see? He asked them. They couldn't wait to share their discoveries. AJ said his gloves had a million little squares where the lines of yarn crisscross. Art's green leaf had a lot of yellow in it. And although it seemed smooth when you saw it up close, it was covered with wrinkles. Og's green skin had black dots on it. According to Mandy, my beautiful golden fur was actually brown and white as well as yellow. And what did you learn, asked Aldo. Gail raised her hand. That things look different when you look at them more closely. Aldo smiled broadly. Good, you learn to observe. He wrote the word on the board. And observation is what scientists do. Sometimes they use microscopes or telescopes to get a closer look. The more you observe, the more you learn. Today, you took a first step toward being a scientist. Wow, I never knew I was in a classroom full of scientists. The recess bell rang. As they hurried to get their coats, my classmates thanked Aldo one by one. Finally, no one was left except Aldo, Mrs. Brisbane, and Principal Morales. Excellent job, said Mrs. Brisbane. I wish you'd come back and get them excited over math. Now, you are going to send in that application, asked the principal. Aldo nodded. I'm going to do it. I'd like to add something to that application, a letter of recommendation, said Mrs. Brisbane. I thought Aldo would faint. Would you? I'd be proud to write one too, said Mr. Uh, principal Morales. I can't thank you enough, said Aldo. Do me one favor, added the principal. When you graduate and are ready to start teaching, you come to Longfellow School first. Aldo shook his hand. I wouldn't go anywhere else, he said. Woo, that was a relief. I was sad, sad, sad when Miss Mack left for Brazil. I'd be even sadder if Aldo left too. All right, so that was the end of chapter 11. So I want you guys to tell me what you think. Do you think Aldo did a great job as well? And how cool is it that he's going to get two recommendations? And I also want to hear what you guys think about Seth and Tabitha and their friendship. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed chapter 11 and I'll be back on tomorrow for chapter 12.